Hey guys, um, let me talk you through my August Patreon projects. Um, record some voiceovers for the projects, uh, videos that I made before to kind of give you a bit more information about what was going on when I, uh, you know, was making them. Let me take my headphones off because listening to a echoey version of my own voice is incredibly off-putting. Sorry, I, I hate listening to my own voice, so I apologise for inflicting on you guys. Um, <laughs> but um, let me let me just sort of try and use it in a way that's useful. So let's um, talk through this project. Okay. So in August I did a project called Office Seed, uh, Harvesters being overrun by Samworm and a load of stuff about Gidu crime. So let's start with the first one. So I wanted to make a kind of biological uh, gliding seed uh, it's like a sort of nanotechnological, biological, um, gliding, um, winged bat creature monster. <laughs> anyway, this thing's coming through the window of an office and is spreading its sort of uh, biological tendrils into the power supply and the water pipes and other things starting to kind of spread. So this is what I wanted to build. So the really quick way of making something is uh, build it in low poly and then mesh smooth it. I love doing that as a way of quickly getting some organic shapes. I bought this desk for like a dollar off Turbo Squid, I think, and just uh, replicated it a bunch of times, spread it around this office layout that I quickly knocked up. I didn't want it to be too literally realistic, just a kind of, you know, sensation of a cubicle farm office kind of place that I absolutely dread, I admit. Um, so this kind of thing bursts in through the and starts setting up these tentacles as it starts to spread. So the story it's based on is called uh, Chaga, or in, in the UK it's published um, under the title Evolution Shore, but it's by Ian MacDonald, and uh, the synopsis reads, uh, On the trail of a mystery of Saturn's disappearing moons, network journalist Gabby McCasland finds herself in Africa, researching the Kilimanjaro event, a meteor strike in Kenya, which caused this, the stunning African landscape to give way to something equally be beautiful and in indescribably alien, Dubbed the Chaga, the alien flora destroys all madmen materials and moulds human flesh, bone and spirit to its own designs. But when Gabby finds the first man to survive the Chaga's changes, she realises it has its plan, its own plans for humankind. Against the backdrop of Mount Kilimanjaro, MacDonald weaves a staggering tale of keen human observation and speculation as the Kilimanjaro event changes the course of the human race by exposure to something beyond its imagination. So, basically, this... Uh, object has hit Kilimanjaro and started to spread and it spreads at something like 15 meters a day outwards and it sort of takes over every technological artifact that it overruns and breaks it down and creates more of itself um, so at the end of the book it spread so far that it's starting to spread these giant seeds into the city and it creates this incredible scene of like these um, they're not exactly harmful to humans but the human civil, the society starts to just is under so much stress that it's people are just evacuating the city in a panic and it's just chaos and it's, it's it's exciting to read but like terrifying as well what an alien invasion like this might be like so I wanted to kind of depict that so this thing's coming through the window and starting to spread and I thought maybe it's starting to light up and it, it's really cool watching the expanse because um, the proto molecule in the expanse is a lot like the chaga um, I don't think anyone's managed to use it for weaponry in the books, although they're trying, like the UN is definitely trying. Um, they're researching it constantly and so on. And it's probably, in, I know in the second book, it's starting to be used in a similar way to the protomolecule. And there's kind of introducing it into humans and trying to control it with varied results is, is one of the storylines. So it's quite interesting watching it play out on TV. And that's kind of what I was going for here. It's cool to see a book set in Africa as well. So most of the car characters are people of color and it's just, uh, refreshing even though it's written by a white guy with a white protagonist it's more than most of the science fiction I've ever read which makes a nice change and it just gives you a real feel for that the, the guy really loves Africa and it makes you want to makes you want to travel there I'd love to travel to this part of the world um, Kilimanjaro and, and Kenya and so on it just looks really cool anyway um, so yeah this thing's starting to spread and take over and down in the bottom right corner there's like a, a guy just peeping into the office like oh no what's this The next project is um, spice harvesters that are being overrun by a worm, a sidewinding worm. 
So that was my sketch, and then just started to, again, low poly build things. Um, this is generally how I start. Once I've done a very quick sketch, kind of roughly what I want to make, I'll just start building objects and seeing how things evolve. So blocked out a harvester shape and did some quick textures for it. And started arranging it in a way that's similar to the sketch. And just mess around with the composition until I can capture everything in one or two frames. As you can see, the um, pardon me. As you can see, the uh, scene is very simple. I like to try and keep things really simple, mainly because my computer's so old. Oh, sorry, I've got windy pops today. Um, but yeah, just keeping everything simple, and then I can paint a lot of stuff on the top. Just keeping the structure there so that I can kind of paint the flesh over the skeleton into in Photoshop. So maybe having one of the harvesters getting smushed in the background shows you the state of this one in you know a few minutes time a few seconds time sorry and then putting the renderings um, onto a background plate after the first sketch to sort of figure things out do a more neat version with the background plate as the starting point to get the lighting and then superimposing everything onto that not really trying for super high fidelity these are just sketches so it's yeah it's fine Painting in Fopter and grabbing another Fopter from the previous render just for one in the sky. I like how the worm sometimes looks like a giant train, like this unstoppable train. It's kind of a cool image. Okay, Kiwi Prime. So, Kiwi Prime is the personal solar system and planet and um, headquarters of the Harkonnens in Dune. They own the whole solar system. It's like a slave economy. They run it from the top of this pyramid. So I wanted to kind of give them a draw of building that they might like and live in. So this is what I came up with. Maybe like a really visual metaphor of like the slave economy supporting the Harkonnen family. This is their central city on the planet of Kiwi Prime. And this giant arcology is called Barony in the books. And it's described as being rectangular because the Harkonnens just have a, an affinity for like rectangular blocky shapes they just like it for some reason so I've changed that a bit but um, yeah I thought maybe that this could be their central arcology designed to sort of transmit that message of absolute control and almost like arrogant just just contempt for everyone beneath them uh, and they live in they have this beautiful parkland kind of like it reminds me of um, the, the skyscraper in gargoyles where they've got that castle on the top of the skyscraper. These guys have just this beautiful landscape lifted literally up out of the reach of the majority of the people on the planet. So maybe the very most, you know, kind of highly favoured slave ministers in the hierarchy beneath the Harkonnens get to live in this um, kind of, what's the word, like a personal fiefdom, I guess? Or maybe that that's not the right word. Maybe the solar system is the fiefdom. Anyway, this personal estate and personal residence of the baron and his you know immediate family um it's just parkland earth-like parkland and farms and stuff um fields maybe even less mechanized fields more like just common land like in medieval times just gardened almost by hand just because the baron likes to see people working in the fields and small mountains just surround it so you can't see any of the city below when you're in in the actual valley The mountains, I painted the diffuse map and the bump map and the uh, oops, the uh, displacement map. So it's just a flat plane with uh, the displacement map painted on and then pushing the white areas up and keeping the grey areas low. And then with a water plane that is just at the right height to make the lakes and rivers fill in. So there's no downward trend from here to here. The whole floor is completely flat, but you don't really notice that. As long as you see the river and the, the, the farmland, it, the eye kind of accepts it generally. Let me show you the actual 3D model. I thought this would be a good view actually to do a rendering of from beneath, showing people down below. I've done one already, but I think there's more room for more really because it's kind of the place that you see most of the people looking up at Barony from. In the Dune movies, the d design of Kiwi Prime really stands up really well actually. It's one of the things I think that stands up the best in the movie um, with the kind of giant open-mouthed um, smokestack and the green-lit 
skyscrapers and stuff, even the weird overhead train, which is you know anachronistic technology, just kind of works. It's so creepy. Industrial world. So I wanted to show the industrial city below, almost like uh, very like Mega City One, I think, and then above this giant sort of mega structure that just keeps the Harkonnen family uh, comfortable and safe above them. In the renderings, the the guy looks ill proportioned, but it is actually based on a, a genuine genuine um, anatomical model from Daz. So it's as proportioned as Daz will output. I kind of over muscled it because I figured that was something that the Baron might enjoy. But um, apart from that, it's basically something from the uh, the Daz archive. So it's just the kind of foreshortening effect of the camera makes it look very ill proportioned that and that. Looks really strange because this leg looks so small and and, and wide. And I wanted to have the, the the main pleasure palace right on the rim, and just give you a sense of like the sadism that these go these people have been living here for hundreds of years in complete control, no one ever telling them no, and they're just absolutely you know just sadists. So they just have this pleasure palace. Who knows what's dumped into this waterfall, and then it just falls down. And rather than falling down, or even even their rubbish won't fall down onto the people below the water it's just consumed again by this giant horrible looking mouth something about it's just horrifying so I figured that was the sort of thing that you know a Harkonnen might, might find amusing or appropriate for their residence and then up below you've got these giant skyscrapers which are like you know something from North Korea or something maybe there is still a hierarchy within each one as people in the, the, the you know the kind of scarcity economy beneath the Harkonnens just squabble for you know the scraps just demeaning to everybody involved, basically. Very rough, as you can see. It's just like some texture and some displacement map stuff. Could be clouds, could be mountains. Not really that important. Just kind of an ugly, overly industrialized city with this mega structure dominating the skyline. Perhaps designed to make it look a bit like a cathedral, kind of obscene cathedral. But yeah, very quick way of making a 3D um, landscape, just painting a displacement map. And you can paint it, change it, and then save the changes and it will be updated in the previous maps. As you can see, it's not super realistic. I mean, it's pretty rough, but it's the basis for the sketch. Just means I don't have to paint all of this green fields and stuff, you know. This insane tower. I watched uh, Dark Crystal literally the week after doing this, and it's so weird how the Dark Crystal Tower is, is right on this river, this kind of braided river like this. It must have just haunted my dreams because I, I loved Dark Crystal as a kid. I was super impressed with the series, actually. Um, so, yeah, I guess that was just Darren Brown into my brain. <laughs> if, that's, if that f reference isn't familiar, Darren Brown is like a kind of stage hypnotist here in, in uh, the UK, and he uses all these clever techniques to make people think stuff that he's, tel he's telling them to think by, like, putting hiding stuff in the landscape around them as they drive down a street he'll put some signs up and they'll drive past and see the signs and then later he'll use that information to manipulate them it's super creepy check him out um pretty pretty cool show that he does but yeah i often find that ideas will kind of be in my head and i'm not sure where they come from and my brain's just sort of pinching them from somewhere else like that so wouldn't be surprised if i saw a trailer on netflix for dark crystal ages ago and that's where that image came from it's just so so weird and creepy. Oh, also the other one is, of course, um, do you remember Krull? Kr is it Krull with the uh, the glaive? Like they had a dual glaive in um, Dark Crystal, so maybe that's kind of a reference too, actually. Hmm. They're all connected. Those kind of weird '80s mushroom trip films. I love them. Yeah, you can see I'm just building up the PSDs, adding some sort of detail cut from photos and other places that I've, you know, built the um, ornithopters and whatnot, just drop them in there for a bit of some, some prop to kind of fill out the foreground. I like to do the renderings and then add some analog detail at the end, so just paint this and that on, tweak the colour, just kind of sit with it for a while. And I find that as time goes by, my renderings get more and more crude. Like I used to make every nut and bolt. Now it's literally just like, what is the bare minimum I can get away with? <laughs> Usually because I've got 20 other things to do after I finish this and none of them pay very well. So you've got to just do it as quickly as you can. 
Um, you've got to just smash stuff out. Maximum impact, minimum effort. That's the theory. I mean, in real life, I'm always knackered, but like, that's the plan. <laughs> I like the idea of the black Taj. I remember reading somewhere that originally the Taj was, um, the Taj was like a, um, what's the word? That's the word where you put like a person's body and state in kind of a mausoleum. Is it a mausoleum? Like a kind of shrine to them. This was the guy's wife, the white Taj Mahal, and he was going to have a black one. And I just thought that was such a cool image, a black Taj Mahal. And then he had it plucked from some ancient data file, the design for it, and just plopped on the side of this lake, this ornamental fishing lake or whatever. I thought maybe this could be like the Baron's personal gladiatorial slave um, college because I know he likes just watching knife fights and stuff. Maybe that could be one of his personal slave pits. And then this is the last kind of the key one, really, like showing how hellish this city is from down below for the majority of people living here. Just this hopeless, um, awful society everyone's trapped in, dominated by the hyper rich. And so kind of egregiously as well, like they're not even trying to hide it. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope that was interesting. Sorry, I kind of stumble over my words and stuff. Um, not not very uh, not very good at the whole making videos thing yet, but I'll, I'll keep I'll keep practicing. Make sure uh, you keep your feedback coming, and I'll try and you know fix my wrongdoings and improve things. But uh, anyway, thanks very much for watching. Bye.